Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and I'm so happy and proud to say I'm at the 95th Annual Texas FFA State Convention. So this is awesome. And today I have a couple things here. So we have Chris Britton on the line, who is a number one. I have to say this, Chris, author in our recently released book, Texas mm-hmm. Leaders, Volume 1. So thrilled about this. Um, Chris is also the founder of Gov Experts, and he's a past state Texas FFA officer. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right. So we got a lot to talk about. So we're going to talk about, of course, your experience in FFA. We're going to talk about the book. So this is, yeah. I mean, we did a big book signing yesterday. It was so much fun. There's a lot of, lot of pictures out there and more content coming out on our TikTok and otherwise. But I think just to get us kicked off here, like how did you originally get introduced to and find the Texas FFA? Well, my, my journey started in Cleburne, Texas. At the, uh, when I started in high school there, you know, it was always, it was something that my parent, my dad was an FFA member mm. and uh, encouraged so me to family, to, family connections <laughs> and things, obviously. And uh, my mom was an FFA sweetheart. Oh, come in on. In fact, they uh, <laughs> actually, one of their first dates was at the State Fair of Texas. Things. And so you could say it was kind of preordained for me to, yeah. uh, to always be part of, part of FFA. And so that started uh, there my, my freshman year in Cleburne and uh, you know, had a, a tremendous experience both with the supervised agricultural experience, raising animals, being responsible for, for, for their care maintenance, and then really get involved in the leadership development programs mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and public speaking and, and other activities and things that kind of contribute to it. I don't know that I could say, I, I can't under, underestimate or, you know, the, the role that the organization yeah. has had in my life and, and the journey that, I, that I've had. Wow. So I had a, a, another past state officer on the show. So Kathy Beck, and I mm-hmm. heard about her kind of journey, at, you know, to state officer, like maybe tell us a little bit about your, your sure. journey and how you got there, because that's a big deal. Well, and it's uh, it's it, it wasn't without struggle and things, too. Uh, you know, it's uh, one of those things where it, the, the thing I think it's good about the organization is it gives you challenges as mm-hmm. well. And you're not always going to be successful in the things that you did. So I, you know, after my freshman year, I wanted to run for uh, office, uh, the chapter level and the district level, yeah. uh, went to the district level, had my speech all made up and uh, <laughs> was going through that. And it was a little bit off. And, uh, you know, they progressively kind of just kept yeah. voting and voting and voting. I kept rolling down and down wow. and down until, you know, there was only one person left and no office, you know, an office and everything. So I was the last person to get a spot there at that district level. But that just kind of made me more determined. Yeah. And so we came back there after having a wonderful year with a great group of district officers, mm-hmm. uh, then ran for the next level, which is area, mm-hmm. and uh, was successful there. And then the next year we were able to move on to, to be state officer and state vice president. And, you know, and the folks that I served with there are, are some of the lifelong friends that I have today. Wow. So I've heard about like the different types of programs, whether it's leadership or speaking or otherwise. Now I know, and we'll get into more mm-hmm. about what you do at, at Gov Experts, but like, tell us a little bit more, like give us some insight into like what goes into that speaking program. Well, the speaking programs, and they've changed some since I, I, I was involved. Uh, they're, they're more topic specific. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they have more, you know, policy oriented, more yeah. debate things. Uh, when I was there, uh, and this is interesting, kind of playing into my, my long term career, I did both yeah. extemporaneous and prepared public speaking. Mm-hmm. And so extemporaneous, you're coming in on the signs of the, t- you know, the topics of the time and you're given a short amount of time in order to prepare a speech to be able to talk, you know, yeah. at a certain level to be able to introduce a topic and, ha- and have a conversation about that. Prepared, you have a little bit more uh, time to, to, to work on. You're, you're more kind of polished in regards to it. It was funny. I was talking to a client, uh, and we do lobbying and public relations, and uh, the particular client was uh, interested in, uh, in genetics and genetic research, mm. and uh, we were talking about you know animals and the, and the role of the genetic play with us. I was giving speeches about this in <laughs> high school. Oh, come on. And uh, so it was uh, an interesting yeah. thing 30 years later that some of that's coming to fruition. Yeah, and I see, like, and, and for me, when I see the, the progression of what, like, some of the individuals that I've had the opportunity to either interview or mm-hmm. even some of the, the kids that I've talked to or the members... I can see the progression and how these life skills will carry over and can carry over into their adult life and into their careers or chosen paths. And there's a lot of different like routes to go. So, for example, we've had some individuals that they were inspired to continue to go into agriculture. Mm -hmm. Yourself, you went into you went into uh, government and Mm -hmm. public policy and your lobbyists. Maybe tell us a little bit more about GovExperts and kind of how you feel it influenced and it helps you today. 
Sure. Well, GovExperts is our political consulting firm, and it's also a community. So we try to provide a forum and a platform for individuals to talk about public policy issues in a serious manner and, and to help work towards the solutions in regards yeah. to that. And part of that just comes from that background that I had in yeah. FFA talking about uh, I feel policy like it has issues. To. Like, it, how yeah. could you not bridge that connection? It Absolutely. Has to. Yeah. And things. And so the you know those public policy issues you know we we talked about them we've been doing you know and and they mean something. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things I've been drawn to and one of the things that we 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 worked in the book my chapter's focus on civic leadership and mm-hmm. participation and the importance of it. And so that the the genesis of that was my time in FFA. Wow. And, you know, FFA has prepared me to be a good citizen. Mm. It's prepared me to participate in our political process. Mm. It's prepared me to, uh, to, to advise clients in yeah. uh, the legislature, uh, you know, that have business in front of the legislature mm. in regards to how, to how to achieve their objectives. Mm. And so, you know, I, I view FFA and ag science yeah. uh, as really kind of that, that impetus and that empowerment. And so one of the things that I, I tell people, so we all, you know, when we talk mass media, sometimes maybe we hear that, oh, you know, the future of our country and, you know, we're, nobody wants to work or, or we're, what's, the, what's the next generation is going to, what's that going to look like? And so when you talk about things like being a good citizen, mm-hmm. maybe elaborate on that a little bit more and how this whole environment and ecosystem helps that. You bet. Uh, I think working through difficult issues, mm-hmm. you've got challenges that you have at the chapter level, at the district level, area level, yeah. international level, within the FFA that yeah. you've got to work through. Like there's uh, resistance. It's not given to you. You have to. And I don't mean resistance. Yeah. Is, I mean, it's challenging. There's it's, other chal- it's, it's challenging whenever you have two people that yeah. may have different of opinions and things. They've got to work through that. You've got to work through it in a way, too, that you can work with that person the next day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of the challenge of our democracy. And I think one of the things that's most important, too, about where we are today as society, we're polarized along the extremes. Mm-hmm. You need organizations that train people how to, how to, how to work within yeah. our civic system mm-hmm. and be engaged and, and to be effective. Yeah, because there's been different periods and times where, you know, in different, let's say, governments where you're, you know, you can disagree and afterwards you're still, you know, That's colleagues right. and That's you, right. see, you, you move on. And I feel like when I think about Texas FFA and FFA in general, is that having that experience at a young age of knowing that somebody can have a differing opinion and mm-hmm. still be your, you know, community member and still, you know, have a good relationship with like that. That's key. That's yes. key to growing Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's so important uh, like I said, to, to be able to be able to function in society that way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you think about it, too, uh, you know, and you ask about the ways in which the organization parliamentary procedure, mm. you know, the ability to run a meeting yeah. and to run a meeting on time to get out. <laughs> but, but, but things, yeah. That's that's something your colleagues will appreciate Still. many years for things, yeah. the ability to run a meeting and get done by a deadline. Mm. And, things. and so those are kind of important traits that, that are out there. So what keeps you, you know, coming back? What keeps you involved? A lot of different things you could be doing with your time. You're, you're a busy guy. You're here this year. Like mm-hmm. that's not, you know, there's no, there's no lack of, of things pulling you in different directions. What keeps you coming back? Well, I think a couple of things. One is the, the, the you, I remember a tremendous sense of loyalty and debt to mm-hmm. this organization. And it, it has given me so much. And to be here to be inspired by these kids yeah. that are oh, behind yeah. us, you know, to, to be able to see them working together, to be able to see them having fun together yeah. and all around the common purpose of agriculture, agricultural education mm-hmm. and the FFA is it's inspiring and uplifting. So if you want to feel good about mm-hmm. our state and our nation, this is the place to be. Mm-hmm. All right. So, you know, we got to talk about the book. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this. This is our very first edition, Texas Leaders Volume 1. If you haven't picked up a copy yet, pick it up. What do you hope that your readers will get out of reading your message in this year today? So my portion of the book, we talked about uh, the importance of civic leadership and participation mm-hmm. and engagement. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think the overall point that I'm, I'm trying to make and encourage, first of all, you can be a participant in our democracy at any level, whether yeah. it's and the most important thing you can do, vote. Yep. I don't care who you vote for, but vote. <laughs> uh, I'd, you know, I think it, you, you can also know your elected office holders. You can articulate your viewpoints. You can let them know how, what you feel about a particular issue and, you know, and to help them to, to be re- your representative, whether it's at the local level, at the state level, or at the national level. Our democracy doesn't work if everybody just sits back and watches whatever news channel is of yeah. their choice. 
you, you got to get out there and engage. You got to get out there and engage with people of diverse viewpoints. Yeah. And you got to realize that they just have as much of, of a right to be able to, to articulate that viewpoint and have it as, as what you do mm-hmm. and figure out what the common good is and how you move forward. Yeah. And what, so one of the things that we talk a lot about um, on this show is echo chambers, that idea that, um, you know, if you're only around your individuals or you're only getting your viewpoint, then you don't ever get to see anything else that's going on, especially when you think about social media or something else. Mm-hmm. This is the way the algorithms work. If you hit a like on something, that's all you're going to get is that type of content. So when do you ever see the other side? When that's do you right. see any other viewpoint? So kind of breaking out of that echo chamber, I mean, I feel it's necessary to be a good citizen. Well, that's one of the things I love about my job, which is in lobbying and public affairs in Austin. You know, on a particular issue, we've got to understand not only what our side's yeah. coming from, but we've got to understand what the other side's coming from. So you see a very diverse set of things. You're challenged to, to come up with all sorts of different understandings of issues that, that are out there. And so it's, it keeps it, it, it works very nicely to uh, yeah. uh, satisfy my ADD, too. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. No, I, I, I'm a big mm-hmm. fan of this. You're almost, you're almost, in this case, forced to break out <laughs> you are. on a daily mm-hmm. basis because you have, to, you have to get to the issues. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Mm. Well, I want you to talk maybe to the to the corporate sponsors. So there's a lot of individuals out there that they, they, they watch this show. They're business owners, entrepreneurs, executives, and they, you know, they go to events, they sponsor events. Maybe they're not here today, mm-hmm. but why should big business think about supporting these kids and supporting the organization? Well, I think from a... Uh from a standpoint of a future recruiting for employees, mm-hmm. uh, things there's no better recruiting pool than than the kids that are yeah. they're behind us. You know, they have a grit and a determination that I, I think you know will yield any corporation, anybody that's that's, that's focused on results. Mm-hmm. Uh, things would would, would do to, to consider them. Uh, I think too, you know, when you're investing in them, you're investing in in an organization that's training people to be good citizens, training people mm-hmm. to be good workers, and. Uh, you know, you, you know, the skills that they're learning, they're going to be applicable in agriculture, but they're applicable all out. Thanks to some of our corporate sponsors that I just walked through the convention hall uh, to, to visit Exxon, yeah. uh, Wyndham Hotels, McCoy's. You know, the, those are our, our top flight employers in our mm-hmm. state. And they recognize, you know, what's yeah. going on here with the Texas FFA. Yeah, it's great. Well, Chris, I'm thrilled to continue to promote this book yep. with you. And I'm so happy that you came on the show today. And I just want to say, hey, I can't wait to the next time we get to meet. And thank you again for coming on the show. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Adam.